What is up YouTube fam, Ravi C here, and this week we are gonna talk about how to not let your game slip while the conditions become a little less favorable. That's right, we're talking about how you can better play in the rain. The easiest way for you to start playing better in the rain is to not. It's that simple. Let's wrap it up. I'll leave you with the birdie. All right, a little silly. But when it comes to the unfortunate situation of playing in the rain, I think there are two scenarios that most often come up. The first is that you're in the middle of a round and rain happens to come upon you when you weren't expecting it. The second is when you know you have to play in the rain and how do you become better prepared for that? Both equipment choices and mental choices you can make to start slaying it when the sky is dropping right on your face. The first is that the most prepared disc golfer is always the best disc golfer. This goes back to a lot of what we talk about on the channel on knowing your bag and being prepared but when it comes to unfavorable conditions being prepared on how to handle them and adjust to them is going to give you a leg up on your competition all the time the second is realizing that in both of our scenarios there comes a point where we need to call the plumber some of you are like i'm a renter i don't have to call the plumber or i'm 16 years old i definitely don't have to deal with that when something goes wrong in your house often we try to fix it ourselves and eventually there might come a point of no return where you just have to call in a professional when we first start experiencing rain, we just want to try to keep the conditions as normal as possible. That means drying off our discs before we throw them and drying them off before we put them back in the bag as to keep wet things wet and dry things dry. However, if you've played in a long rain round, you realize that there is a point of no return when you just can't keep things dry. This is the point where we have to call the plumber. The hard part about disc golf is that someone else can't come in and throw your discs for you. So you have to spend time outside of a rain round becoming the plumber or becoming I mean, the expert in how to use these wet discs in wet conditions. So are you ready for plumber training school? Because here are the tools that you'll need to start succeeding in the rain. The first thing you're gonna need is waterproof shoes. I understand that in a torrential downpour or in a tropical storm, even the best waterproof shoes are still going to get your feet wet. But having solid footwear is not only going to give you comfort while you're playing through the rain round, but most waterproof shoes also have better grip and traction so that you're not worried about your footing while you're playing. Next, you're gonna need a high quality raincoat. It's one thing to have a really nice raincoat, but the second is to have a raincoat that actually fits your body. Having sleeves that are too long or a torso area that is too bulky is going to get in your way while you're trying to throw the disc or especially while you're out on the putting green. Having the wrong size rain jacket could become more of a hindrance rather than a help when it comes to playing in the rain. The next thing and honestly more important than the ones that came before it is having a high quality umbrella. I'm not talking about one of those baby umbrellas you bought at a Walmart checkout line, but rather a golf umbrella or or a sizable umbrella because it does two things for you. The first is that it keeps rain off of your back and off of your bag, which is super helpful. But the second is that it creates a dry area for you. You can keep your discs prepped and ready to go. And then when you're ready to take them to the throw, you can tuck them underneath your rain jacket and keep them from being exposed to the elements for as little time as possible. Taking us to our next item, an essential one, towels. When you think you have enough towels for a rain round, get a few more. And when you think you've got enough there, get a few more. You can never have have enough towels during a rain round, but one of my favorite things to do is to take all of my towels and put them in a Ziploc bag. I also bring additional bags to take my wet and used towels and place them inside that. The goal is before calling the plumber to keep my dry things dry and to keep the wet things away from all of my dry stuff. I am a little biased when it comes to the best towels on the market, but I love my flight towels not only for warming up, but keeping my hands dry during a round. Another really cool thing about Fly Towel Juniors is that with a built-in carabiner, I can actually clip one to my umbrella so that that I constantly have a hanging towel prepped in my dry area. Now, in dealing with all these wet objects, you're going to get your hands a little bit, sorry to use this word for everyone, moist which can be a terrible thing when trying to grip the disc properly. So another really helpful thing is having a dry bag. There are about as many options for dry bags as there are buying discs these days, and you just need to find one that works for you. Personally, I love the dry bags from Chain Shark Disc Golf. These dry bags not only come in some awesome patterns, but the climbing chalk mixture that he uses is incredible and keeps my hands super dry so that I can get the best grip on the disc, no matter the conditions. I feel like I have to mention rain flies really fast. If your bag has a 
rainfly option, it can be super helpful. The problem with these is that rain flies are designed to keep the rain out and often to keep all of your discs in. So in a light casual rain, it becomes rather cumbersome trying to work around your rain fly just to get discs out. So overall for me, rain flies, dealer's choice. Having all of the right equipment is great and will definitely make you a prepared disc golfer. However, I don't believe that just having the right equipment is going to make you an expert. I think there are two things you can do to truly become an expert on playing in the rain. Before I dive into those though, if you've enjoyed this video or you find the content helpful in general, I would love it if you'd be willing to hit that subscribe button and maybe perhaps hit the bell so that way you know when new videos come out. If not, no hard feelings. Still love you and appreciate you just watching this video alone. The first step to becoming an expert is learning how your discs fly. I always suggest taking your bag out to a field and throwing your discs multiple times to see how they fly. I really suggest taking your discs out to a field and learning how they fly when they're wet. Grab yourself some discs and a bucket and fill that bucket full of water. Then take each of your discs and dunk them in the water and learn what it feels like to putt with super wet discs or learn what it feels like to throw your discs on certain lines. You'll often find that the slipperiness causes them to be a little less consistent and a little less accurate. And that's okay because you need to learn what is possible while you're playing in the rain and what isn't possible while you're playing in these unfavorable conditions. For me personally, the moment it starts raining or getting wet, I stop throwing forehands. I'm not able to do it as effectively, so I just give up on forehands and start trying to throw some turnovers. I promise you that 95% of disc golfers do not go and simulate what it feels like to play with wet discs, which means that you simply doing that would give you a massive leg up on your competition. Final tip though, isn't just about practicing with your discs. It's about making sure you're picking the right ones. Throwing base plastics and lower speed discs is always going to help you play better in the rain. Most of us love throwing premium plastics because not only do they look better and last longer, but often they can be easier to find too. However, in raining conditions, your premium plastics become much more slick and that is much harder to deal with in the rain. Base plastics give you that extra bit of tack or grip, which could be the difference between you getting a par or a double bogey on a hole. The other mental step is realizing that faster speed discs require more power to be injected into them. And when you're trying to inject more power in unfavorable conditions, it is much harder to do. Disking down to putters in mid ranges not only helps you become more accurate, but it allows you to do less in these less favorable conditions. Trying to full send a 12 speed driver is always going to be hard, especially when you feel like you can barely grip the disc. I love talking about these tips and tricks to try to improve your game. And one of the best places we do this is over in the birdie fam. In fact, this entire video idea came from a birdie fam discussion about how to play better in the rain. If you haven't heard of the birdie fam, it's a community of disc golfers looking to improve one throw at a time. Through our discord and Facebook chats, we're able to truly rally around one another and talk about what we're actually struggling with during the game. So if you want to join an uplifting and positive community that really is trying to improve, feel free to head down to the link in the description below and check out some details. I want to thank you for stopping by. I hope you have an absolutely amazing week and that you don't have to use any of this advice because where you play is full of sunshine and rainbows. And if you live in Alabama, apparently we are going to have rain for the rest of our lives because it seems like it rains every single day. But for now, I'm going to leave you with the birdie.